Janelle Patton was a 29-year-old woman living in Sydney, Australia. She had gone through a number of failed relationships that left her unhappy and wanting a fresh start somewhere new. Janelle decided to move to the small island of Norfolk Island, located in the Pacific Ocean between Australia, New Zealand, and New Caledonia. Norfolk Island is a small volcanic island located in the Pacific Ocean, roughly halfway between Australia and New Zealand. It's only about five miles long and three miles wide, with a total land area of just 13 square miles. Today, Norfolk Island is a self-governing external territory of Australia with a population of around 2,000 people. Its main industries are tourism and agriculture. The island is known for its natural beauty, coral reefs and pine trees. It has a mild subtropical climate. With its history as a former penal colony and its remote location over 1,000 miles from mainland Australia, Norfolk Island has a reputation for being extremely quiet and having a laid-back lifestyle. It's seen as a safe, peaceful place with very little crime or disruption. For Janelle Patton, moving to this tiny, isolated island community seemed like the perfect escape after her failed relationships and chance to start over. She hoped the slower pace of life, natural beauty and feeling of safety on Norfolk Island would provide the fresh beginning she longed for away from her troubles back home in Australia. Tragically, that proved not to be the case. But unfortunately, Janelle continued to have unhappy relationships even after relocating to her new island home. She had moved halfway across the world looking for happiness, but still struggled to find it. On Saturday, March 30, 2002, Janelle's parents arrived on Norfolk Island from Sydney for a visit with their daughter. They made plans to meet up with Janelle for lunch the following day on Sunday. But Janelle never arrived for their planned Sunday lunch. When she didn't show up, her parents became extremely worried and contacted the local Norfolk Island police force. This tiny police force only had a few officers on an island where serious crimes were almost unheard of. Soon after Janelle's parents raised the alarm, two tourists from New Zealand made a shocking discovery on the opposite side of the small island from where Janelle lived. While hiking near the cockpit waterfall reserve, they fall upon the body of a woman wrapped in a large black plastic sheet. Police were called to the scene and the body was identified as 29-year-old Janelle Patton, who had been reported missing earlier that day by her concerned parents. Janelle's body was found miles away from her home on the other side of the island. This was nowhere near the coastal walking track where she had last been seen going for her regular morning walk the day before. The autopsy on Janelle Patton's body revealed the truly horrific extent of violence she suffered. She had a total of 64 stab wounds distributed across her body. These were forced by a sharp blade and penetrated deep into her flesh and organs. In addition to the many stab wounds, Janelle also suffered severe blunt force trauma. Her skull was cracked and fractured in several places, evidencing a wild beating to her head. Her pelvis was also broken along with her ankle, which was completely fractured. The sheer number and distribution of stab wounds and other injuries indicate Janelle underwent a prolonged wild attack. The person who killed her did so in an uncontrolled craze of extreme violence. However, the injury that ultimately caused her death was a single devastating stab wound directly to the chest. This penetrated deep into her lung, causing massive internal bleeding. With one of her lungs collapsed and her airway filled with blood, Janelle eventually broke down to blood loss and suffocation. The extent and diversity of wounds reflect intense personal rage and anger directed at Janelle during this murder. She was not just simply murdered, but endured an explosion of violence that shocked even seasoned police officers and forensic experts who examined her body. Janelle Patton's death was a brutally intimate crime of hatred that devastated all who knew her. The local Norfolk Island police launched a murder investigation, but had very little experience with a serious crime of this magnitude. There was no clear motive and no suspects. The main evidence included Janelle's defensive wounds, proving she fought fiercely against her attacker. Small pieces of green glass were found caught in her hair. And the large black plastic sheet that her body was carefully wrapped in before being dumped. With few leads, the investigation dragged on for years without any arrests. Finally, in February 2006, almost four full years after the murder, 
The Australian Federal Police were able to identify a prime suspect through tireless investigative work. 28-year-old Glenn McNeil, a cook who lived on Norfolk Island, was arrested near Nelson, New Zealand, where he had moved. He was sent back to Norfolk Island to face criminal charges. When questioned by police shortly after his arrest, McNeil said he had accidentally struck Janelle Patton with his car while driving under the influence of marijuana on the day she disappeared. But he later retracted this statement entirely. In February 2007, almost five years after Janelle's shocking murder, Glenn McNeil went on trial in the Norfolk Island Highest Court. A media ban was ordered to avoid unfairness among the small group of possible jurors on the island. As the trial commenced on March 1st, McNeil emphatically told the court he did not kill Janelle Patton, did not abduct her, and did not see her on the day she vanished. He claimed he could not recall what he told police in earlier interviews and would have admitted to anything because of mental health issues he struggled with. The trial continued for over a week with proof and evidence presented. Then on March 9th, the jury finally reached their verdict. Guilty. McNeil was convicted of the murder of Janelle Patton, though questions still remained about the motive and other unidentified female DNA found on Janelle's body. In July 2007, McNeil was sentenced to 24 years in prison by the Chief Justice of the Norfolk Island Supreme Court. The sentencing took place in Sydney since Norfolk Island does not have the facilities to imprison someone for such a long duration. McNeil continued to claim innocence and appealed his conviction to the Australian Federal Court. His legal team argued his statements to police should have been inadmissible, but the appeal failed to overturn the guilty verdict. A further appeal to the High Court of Australia, the highest court in the country, was also unsuccessful. In November 2008, the High Court refused to hear McNeil's appeal, exhausting his legal options. After more than six painful years of living with uncertainty, Janelle Patton's grieving family finally got justice. Her killer was definitively convicted and sentenced to prison. But the community of Norfolk Island was forever changed by this tragic, violent murder that shattered the calm way of life on the isolated island. Janelle's death marked the first murder on Norfolk Island in over 100 years, since 1893. The residents of Norfolk Island were shocked that such a horrific crime could happen in their peaceful home known for safety and community. Janelle's murder became a definitive part of the island's history. Janelle had moved to Norfolk Island, desperately seeking happiness after relationship troubles back in Australia. The secluded island community was meant to be her fresh start, but instead she met a disturbingly violent end. Though justice was eventually served for Janelle's murder after a painfully long wait, the memory of her brutal killing while simply out on a morning walk still haunts the island today. Janelle Patton's life was cut short at only 29 years old, but she will not be forgotten.